go. Hi, I'm James Black. This is the Measurement and Instrumentation Lab for Montana State University, Fall 2021, and we're making a video for you for the ultrasound non-destructive testing lab. We just got some new equipment, that's why we're making this new video. This is the non-destructive testing unit from Olympus. It's an Epoch 650. This is a, I forget the exact list price, but it's somewhere like $6,000, $7,000 each. So try to be careful with them. It'll come in a big blue case like this. And it is battery operated, but because it's a relatively new unit, the battery hasn't been charged yet. So I will plug it in. There should be a power cable in there. It, it might be up in this top half. You just open it with those tabs. But once you get it out, there's a little stand on the back. You can adjust that to get the right angle. And then the power, you just have to lift up this tab here and plug the cable in like that. Then the other hardware connection you need to make is to connect the transducer and we use a mini coax cable for that and there are two options for this on the top here there's an one coax connection with an R and then another with a T slash R and you can set this up in lots of different configurations one would be to use a transceiver to or one transducer to transmit the signal and then another one to receive it. And in that case, you would use both. But what we're gonna do is just use one to both send and receive the signal. So we'll use the T slash R input. So we put this coax cable on there. And then on the, I'll fire this up so it'll get going. On the other end, the mini coax end, we'll want to connect the transducer. And we have a variety of different transducers that we're gonna use in this lab. Let me pick English language here and keep it firing up. So these transducers, when you, when you get one from the box, it's probably gonna come out like this. And there are a couple reasons why we wanna use this one for the first part. And one reason is it's smaller, because you are going to be using this to find the shape that has been machined out on the back side of this aluminum block. When you get it, it has this wood block covered, covering it, but once you have finished figuring out what the shape is using ultrasound, then you'll open this up and see if you were right. But part of the reason the smaller one is better is because it, just because it's smaller and you have a better spatial resolution. So you, you can more accurately define the pattern here as compared to say one of the, the bigger ones. It would be harder with this bigger diameter. Another reason is this is a higher frequency and in a thinner sample, higher frequencies work better. So this higher frequency would be, say, better than this one that's a lower frequency. We could use this one for the thicker samples and where we're not caring about spatial, spatial resolution. Let's get this, we'll screw it on here. So you, you just, get that right lined up on the, that inner wire and you screw it on. And some students get confused by this. They think that this is what you hang on to and you use this end, but you actually want to remove this plastic cap. And the end that doesn't have any writing on it, that's the end that you want to put here where, that you're, where you're measuring. But we should be pretty good to go for the first part we need to make some adjustments over here. The, so this is reset to factory defaults. You might get lucky and come in and have one that's kind of set up for you from the previous group, or we, we might reset it. You might need to do this from the beginning. But just to show you how to do it from the beginning. The, the first thing, note up here, this is where we're gonna get our measurement out. And note the units are inches, and we, there, there, again, there are lots of different ways we can set this up, but what we're going to try to determine first is the longitudinal wave speed. So we're going to, we have this known thickness out here where, you know, we, we don't have the aluminum block covering it. We can measure this thickness. And if we measure the time it takes to go through it and back, we can get the velocity. And so that's what we want to do in this first step. 
So instead of inches, we want units of time. So if we here we can cycle through the the different measurement or the different options in on this menu measurement setup. There we want to come and pick the unit where it's set to inches and we can rotate it over here until we get to microseconds. We can press this to select that. So and here we're seeing the pulse that's being sent out, but we're not seeing anything returning. Now if I put this on here, I've used some glycerin couplant for this. For the longitudinal wave speed, glycerin works well for that. If I put this on here, I hope to get, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here to the screen. The first, so range will adjust the, um, the X, our, our time axis, the X axis. And I'm seeing a little something down here, but it's pretty small. So I wanna, <coughs> I want to adjust the time, or sorry, the, the y axis, the amplitude. For that, you hit this dB over here, and then you can just kind of go through to find which settings work the best. But now, now you're starting to see the spikes. So, what this is, is it has the signal it's sent out, and it, it passes down through the sample and comes back up, and this is the first echo. And then we have the sec, I think we have some noise probably from the table below, but. Um, these these other pul these pulses are the, the big ones that we want to get. So to measure these, so we could even maybe zoom in a little bit more, maybe like that. To measure these, we need to use the gate function. So here's the gate button, and maybe we can even zoom in a little bit better on our x-axis too. So let's the wrong way, like that. So our first gate is this red bar. We can come over, after we pick that gate function to get here, we can pick gate one here, and then we can adjust where it starts and how wide it is. So we want to capture, here I'm moving the start to earlier in time. And I want to reduce the width of it now. So we're just capturing that that echo and we have it set there, there are different settings you can either get it to pick the edge or the peak by default it's set to peak and that works fine for us but that little red triangle there is indicating that that's the point it's measuring so it's automatically finding the peak for us and if, if we measured edge to edge or we measured peak to peak that would either one of those would be fine but this peak to peak works now we need to turn it on our second gate. That's not on by default, but if we pick that, come down here, turn this on, there we have that gate. And we see it way over here to the right. So we want to, again, adjust where it starts and its width. And we can adjust the height of it if we want. We can bring it down lower or higher. That's that level. Um, the, the alarm, we can set it to be like a, a minimum value, or if it drops below a certain value, it'll give us an alarm. But the, the, the only thing that we need to do at this point to get the right measurement out of this is, so you look up here and you might think that 7.27 microseconds is the time. But if you look here, this is more the time it goes from zero to where the second gate is. And it, this might not be so clear, but the fact that this is saying two here is indicating that that's what it's doing. But we can also see that just based on the value. But what we actually want is the time you know, between echoes. So to switch to that, I think, oh, we, Gate setup, that's what we want. So go gate setup and then G2 tracks. Down here, switch this to on. So now it's it's picking the difference between the peak. So it's subtracting the peak of one from the peak of two. And we're getting the 3.2 microseconds. And that matches our scale down here for what we want. And that, I, I know that that should be fairly close to giving us 
the right speed based on the thickness here. You, you want to do that simple calculation. Take some calipers, measure the known thickness. You do this to measure the time through it, and then divide the distance by the time, and you'll get the speed. And then go to something like Engineering Toolbox online and look at the longitudinal wave speed for aluminum and make sure that you're in the ballpark. So, and then once you know what the, the speed through here is, then you can come over here and find, like here you can see, so, so here is where we're still within the thicker section. And if you don't want to measure the second peak, you, you can measure the, the first pulse and the second one. That might make it easier, but you, you can measure, and between any consecutive echoes will work. But if you come over here, like now you're seeing that it's happening sooner. The echo is happening sooner in time, meaning it's thinner there. So you, you, that, that would indicate that there's a change in the shape here. And you, you need to come up with a strategy, make some grid here, maybe start out bigger, and then kind of zero in on where the transitions between what's machined and what isn't machined is. Your, your shape in here is going to be relatively simple. I'll show you this just for, at, at one point somebody thought that the students of this class needed a challenge, and this is what kind of a shape was machined out on the back. Don't worry, yours isn't anywhere near that tough. You, um, but there is something machined out on here that you need to determine, and you need to do a CAD drawing of it. So, the, so that's the first part of the lab. The second part is determining material properties. And at least in terms of using this equipment, it's much the same. You're measuring the thickness with a caliper, and then you're using a transducer to measure the, um, the longitudinal wave speed and the shear wave speed. And we're going to use different transducers. Like I said, the lower frequencies work better in the thicker samples. And this is a thicker sample, so we, we will switch. That, that's one good reason, but the other good reason is we don't have enough of these to go around for everybody to be doing everything at once or having all the equipment at once. So you might do this part while somebody else is doing this part. So just, <coughs> excuse me, covering from a cold still. But um, switch, whoops, switch over to the these bigger but still longitudinal ones. So you'll still use the glycerin for that. And then when you measure the shear wave speed, switch over to, to these. And you'll note there's a little S etched on there. We wrote that on there so you can remember this one's for shear. But here, you'll still be measuring the time to go through here but instead of the, uh, the, the, the sound wave um, fluctuations in amplitude being parallel to the direction of pop propagation, it's going to be perpendicular. So the, the sound will still be going like this, but it's oscillating like this. So, so that, that's what this transducer does differently than this one. And for that, you'll need a different couplet. You need something this is kind of more like molasses. It's shear wave coupling. Um, it's water soluble, so you can just clean it up with water and a paper towel. That's it. Good luck, and we'll be there to help you if you have any questions.